Hello, hello, Sarah of SEK Handmade here, and today I want to share with you how to work Tunisian crochet in the round. Let's go. So you want to do Tunisian crochet in the round, and <laughs> I am so glad you do. This is one of my most favorite Tunisian crochet techniques. It can be done with a really wide variety of stitches. I find the whole process after the setup <laughs> to be incredibly soothing and satisfying. So let's talk about all the things that you need to know to get started with this. If you are brand new to Tunisian crochet, I have a whole playlist of videos to get you started on learning Tunisian crochet and a couple patterns like my beginner Tunisian necklace that are a great place to start. Um, I will confess, I learned Tunisian crochet <laughs> for the very first time um, in the round, but um, looking back, it's maybe not the first place I would start, especially if you want a really firm understanding of what Tunisian crochet is and how it works. So I would call this kind of like a little second step, but you do you. If you want to back up and you don't have any Tunisian crochet experience, I recommend my beginner videos and my beginner Tunisian necklace pattern. Super simple, lots of fun. So let's talk about the tools that you need first because they are slightly different than the tools you need for flat Tunisian crochet. The main thing is that you need a hook that is double-ended. You can see this hook, and if you've seen these like me, I would go into the craft section of my local craft store and I'd see these and be like, what the heck do you use that for? Well, now you know. It's a Tunisian crochet hook and it's used for working in the round. It's got a hook on one end and a hook on the other end. And these are sized just like um, regular crochet hooks. I don't know if you can see, it's got listed the size that it is on there. And for this one, it's sized the same at both ends. So this is all a 5.5 millimeter Tunisian crochet hook. But you don't have to use one of these hooks to work in the round. You can also use an interchangeable Tunisian crochet set. I love, love my Knitter's Pride. They are gorgeous. Look at that. They are also, though, on the expensive side. So if you are uh, just starting out, you maybe don't want to invest in this. But what you're going to do if you use an interchangeable set is you're going to pick the size hook that your pattern calls for and attach it to the end that will be where you work on your forward pass. And then you're going to uh, get the next hook size down and attach it to the other end of your cord and work your return pass with the slightly smaller hook. So let's just start with the simple hook here and the one that more people probably have, the double-ended hook. So the other thing that you're going to need is two sources of yarn. Now, again, if you're working with a pattern, check out what your pattern calls for. If you're doing it all in one color, let me back up. I am doing two colors so that you can see the difference. <laughs> and it creates a really neat effect working in two colors. But if you're only working in one color, you can very easily pull from the inside and the outside of that same ball of yarn. So you don't need to buy multiple balls of yarn if you can finish the project in one ball of yarn. Just pull from the inside and the outside of your ball or skein, um, but you're going to need two sources of yarn. I'm going to use my gray for my forward pass, and I'm going to use my navy for my return pass. So I am going to take my gray yarn, and I'm going to work my setup in my gray yarn. If you are just playing around here, you can chain whatever number of chains you would like. Um, just keep in mind that we're working in the round, so you need to be able to go all the way around it. <laughs> so like a, a teeny little piece isn't going to work. You're probably going to want, I don't know, probably at least 12 or 15 inches 
of fabric to get working in the round. And so I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook and some worsted weight yarn here. And I'm just gonna chain um, a few stitches, or a, a few stitches, I'm gonna chain some chains until I think it's a good size to work in the round. All right, so I think I've got a good 12 inches there. So I'm gonna go ahead and join in the round. Now, this is something that can be a little tricky, but don't, don't stress out about it too much. <laughs> so go ahead and make sure your chain is nice and flat. And then I always work into the back bump. So I'm gonna turn my back bump up and I'm going to insert my hook into the back bump of that first chain. And then I'm gonna be sure I'm finding my working yarn here and not my tail, cause that can get messy. <laughs> and I'm just gonna join it with a slip stitch. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna work my setup round. So just pulling up loops onto my hook, just like you would if you were working flat, but now I've got a circle. So I'm just gonna keep inserting my hook into the back bump and pulling up loops until I fill the main part of my hook up to where I'm starting to feel like I've got too much on there. So you don't have to make it all the way around uh, on this first go. You probably won't <laughs> and you probably shouldn't. You'd have it really smushed up and contorted there. So you can see I have quite a few loops on my hook, but it's not completely full. They're not really smushed. This is totally personal preference. I know people who love to go as far as they possibly can before they uh, work their return pass and other people who are just more comfortable just doing a few stitches at a time. So now that I have loops pulled up on my hook, I'm going to go ahead and this is why it's double ended. I'm gonna flip it around in the other direction and I'm gonna grab my other color of yarn and um, again, I wanna emphasize that this can be a different color or it can be, I could have just pulled from the inside of the same skein of yarn. It doesn't, you don't have to have multiple balls of yarn here. So I'm going to go ahead and just like anytime I'd start yarn, I'm gonna go ahead and just attach my yarn by pulling through one loop. Then I'm gonna work a return pass just like I always would. Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, and work my return pass just like that. Now, some people go all the way to their final loop on their hook. That's personal preference. I find it keeps stability and tension a little more if I leave at least three loops on my hook before I turn and go in the other direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and now I have three loops of my forward pass still on there. I'm gonna flip my work back over, slide my hook down and keep picking up loops for my forward pass and my setup here. Again, I'm to a point where I've got my hook to where I'm comfortable with, with how many loops are on it. I'm gonna turn my hook in the other direction, slide my work down, grab my other yarn and work my return pass. Just yarning over and pulling through two loops at a time until I get back to the point where I have just a couple loops left on my hook. And by a couple, I mean three. <laughs> Flip back, slide my hook down, and let's keep going until we get to our starting point here so we can see how that works. Now, as I have gotten back to my beginning point here, this is the perfect time to make sure that A, you're not twisted 
if you are and you're like, oh, I don't want to go back, you can go ahead. It's going to look a little funny on the bottom, but you can go ahead and just like flatten things out. And if there's a little twist in that bottom chain, it's, it's not very noticeable. But if you're a perfectionist, then you need to go back and make sure you don't have it twisted. Um, <clears throat> But once you get to this point, this is a good time to count your stitches and make sure that you have the correct number. So what I'm going to do to count my stitches is I'm going to count all of my gray loops here. This is why practicing in two colors is super helpful. So I'm going to count my gray loops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, counting that gray loop 20, not counting my blue loop. This is my return pass. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So let's say, yay, I was supposed to have 28. <laughs> so then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start uh, working my Tunisian stitch into my loops that I've created the first time around. So let's say we're working Tunisian simple stitch. So um, I'm just going to start working into my loops from the row before, just like you always do in Tunisian crochet, and picking those up for my Tunisian simple stitch. Picking them up, working, picking, pulling up loops, and working the stitches to make my Tunisian simple stitch. And again, when I get to the point where I feel like my hook is comfortably full or I've stretched my loop as far as I want to, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to go back, tension my yarn, and work my return pass. So Tunisian crochet in the round is worked a little differently than uh, classic crochet in the round because it's worked in a continuous spiral, which you can do with classic crochet. But a lot of times you're in crochet, you're working around, you're chaining up, you're working around. Sometimes you're going back and forth. With Tunisian crochet, you're always traveling with your forward pass in one direction, flipping and doing your return pass again, and you're just spiraling up and up and up and up and up. There's no chaining uh, at the beginning of rounds. And so that, um, that can be super soothing that you're just go, 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 going. <laughs> And depending on how complicated your project is, if you're working a super simple first project in the round, like my two-tone Tunisian tote, um, man, it's just so soothing once you get in the rhythm to go, go, go with it. And it creates a really fun texture. And that's the method. Once you've gone all the way around the first time and you have um completed a round, you just keep working back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Now you can see that this is my first round and just like in flat Tunisian crochet, once you've worked into it, it fills in nicely. And then I've got my loops up here for my row that I haven't worked back into. To finish this off, you need to bind off and that will lay your return pass back down into the middle of that and fill that row in and make it look like everything else. And if you need to know how to bind off, I have a video for that too. I absolutely love working Tunisian crochet in the round. It is so meditative. I hope that after today's tutorial, you will grow in confidence in doing this and find it just as relaxing as I do. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos, like this video, maybe even leave a comment or share it with a friend. Thank you again for joining me today and happy crafting!